Now, Vercel just announced their generative UI system yesterday, V0, and this changes everything. Let's go ahead and see how. So, V0 is basically a generative UI system, and it is built by Vercel Labs and powered by AI. It is built on top of Shared CN UI and Tailwind CSS. Now, if you're someone who is unfamiliar with what Shared CN UI is, you can check out my previous video on it and get a better understanding of what it is. In short, Shared CN UI is basically a collection of reusable components that you can simply copy paste in your projects and organizations and just start using stuff. So it is built on top of that. And what this does is basically you go to the platform, you write a prompt and it basically generates a UI for you. So this is currently in private alpha, so you won't be able to test this, uh, like test this out entirely. And you can definitely go ahead and join the waitlist and it would be amazing if you get access to it. But for now, there are like a lot of examples that have been created for us by the Versal team. You can see there's Steven, uh, there's Shad, there's Shedding and Lee and like a lot of other team members who have basically tested this out and uh, given uh, multiple examples for us to analyze how this works. Now let's go ahead and pick one of the examples. You can clearly see that uh, it took uh, like Shad 22 iterations to get to this UI. But if you go to the very first UI that this generated, I think this is also like a pretty good first UI to generate from this individual prompt. Uh, so uh, a hero component from a, for a email client. Now this was the prompt that he gave and this is the UI that it generated. Now this is like a very good start. It might not be completely perfect and you can like make changes to it as per your requirements, ask it to add borders, add spacing, change the layout and like a lot of other stuff and customizations. You can ask it to add icons and stuff as well. And finally, you can get something like this by changing stuff as per your requirements. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And uh, one important thing is you can just directly go and copy paste this component right into your code and it will just start working. And or else what you can do is you can use their CLI to copy paste this stuff into your uh, projects and it will also install all the necessary things that are required to run this particular UI. So yeah, pretty amazing stuff. And I think this is definitely a important step forward. Now there are a few things that I want to talk about. First of all, why this is use useful because it can save up a lot of your time and effort. It can get you up and running in minutes and it is super easy to integrate and use. We'll see that in just a minute. Next up, like how does it compare to no code platforms? So it, it is definitely better in comparison to no code platforms, but not that mature. Now, why is it better? Because it gives like a lot of control in the hands of the developer. You as a developer get the entire code snippet and uh, it is built on top of familiar technologies like Shad C and UI, Tailwind CSS, React in general. So you can just uh, like analyze the code and make changes to it as per your requirements, toggle the responsiveness and stuff. So you're not restricted by uh, limitations and you can just go ahead and experiment stuff. So I think it is definitely a good step forward. It might, might not be as mature uh, as of now, but I think it will definitely be with time. Now, next up is why is it important that Vercel is backing this project? Now, some of the amazing projects, amazing open source projects out there, such as Novel, uh, Shad CN UI, React Wrap Balancer, Nextra, are from the team members of Vercel, and they are like they are like super amazing people. They build awesome stuff all the time. And the fact that Vercel, this project, this entire platform is built by Vercel, you can expect it to just get better and better with time and improve over time. So yeah, definitely a thing to look out for and basically keep a track of. And it will definitely be a useful tool in your day-to-day -day life. It can get you up and running with UIs instantly and then you can go ahead and make changes to it. Another thing that I want to talk about is the integration and use it. So let's quickly go to the docs and the integration is very simple. First of all, if you don't have like a next step as of now, you can go ahead and create it. And it is important that you add types tailwind support to it. And you can also, uh, you also need to install Shad C and UI uh, into your project, basically set up Shad C and UI uh, since it is built on top of that. So let's quickly go ahead and do these two steps. Now, let me close this and 
what I want to do is I want to create a new next app with that same command. The only difference is I have, I'm using bun to set it up. Now, if you, if you don't know what bun is, you can check out my video on it. It is super fast in comparison to NPM, PNPM, yarn and all the other existing tools. Now let's quickly go ahead and I'll go with all the defa default setup and it will install uh, all the necessary packages and stuff for me. And you can see it was like super quick and let's quickly go and go into the folder that it created and now I will set up shard c and ui into it so i'll run the command bun x shard c and ui at the rate test in it this is the same command that is given on the platform i'm just replacing npx from with bun x and let's run this as well it will also ask a few questions i would i would just go with everything default uh, yes yes and yes and yes and yes and why so yeah it will install everything and yeah the project is ready now let's quickly open this in vs code and start the server to see what we have right now npm run dev and let's go to localhost 3000 so while this is getting build yeah you can see this is the bootstrap app that nix provides you with and this is what we have right now now let's quickly go and try to use one of the examples that the team has created let's uh, go with let's let's go with this one this looks a little complicated let's check how uh, easy it is to set it up i will go ahead and use their cli and simply just run this command inside my project and i will run this command now let's see if it asks few questions now what should we name the component let's call this uh, dashboard component because it sort of looks like a dashboard but you can give your own name and let's see what it does further So it is basically installing all the necessary components that are required from Shard C and UI like buttons, popovers, etc. All the things that are required for this particular UI. And after it is done, you can see there is this components folder that is created in my project. And inside the UI folder, you will see all the basic components that exist in uh, Shard C and UI. And these are basically directly from Shard C and UI. And this is the component that we basically copied or we basically installed from their website directly and as you can see there are like a lot of errors i think these are import errors so let's quickly go ahead and solve these we want to use image component and uh, there are like a lot of import errors uh, add all missing imports but i hope these are from yeah these are from ui yeah so i think it solved all the imports and now we can directly go ahead and use this component inside our page so let's quickly go into the page and remove all of this stuff that is by default there and let's start using that component so i'll import dashboard uh, dashboard component over here and let's see how it looks so this is localhost colon 3000 and it says uh, you are importing a component that needs use effect it only works in client component let's quickly see what did we miss uh, this shouldn't be from lucid react this should also be all of this should be from uh, from the ui itself so ui slash popover and we should also import a table over here yeah, I think that was the issue. So let's quickly go ahead and save this and see if it is working now. Yeah, now you can see this is working now. Uh, there's this uh, image issue because obviously I don't have that image that it used to display, but uh, you can, I think, go and change the source of the image over here and it will start displaying that image. Let's quickly do that. I think we have versal.svg available by default and let's change it to 60 and 60 and let's see how it looks now yeah now you can see it says versal let's remove the h1 tag we have and yeah this is the platform and you can see this is like pretty good out of the box you have buttons and you have uh three dot menus you can have popovers over them with sub options and stuff and 
like this is right in front of you i just made this entire ui in like what two minutes or something so this can like get you up and started in in just minutes and as you can see i made changes to the logo i didn't want that h1 tag over here so i can remove it and this is the control that they, that this gives in the hands of the developer and you can further go ahead and extract out these components into separate components like uh, separating out the sidebar separating out the code of this individual row separating out the code of this individual toggle and like reuse those uh, everywhere in your code base so yeah pretty cool stuff pretty easy to set it up and do check this project out and also vote them on product hunt uh, vote them on product hunt definitely do that and yeah it yeah you all you can also check out the post that lee made and you can see it it uses all the latest stuff out there it uses server components it is built completely on top of versal and its uh, technology so yeah do let me know what you think about v0 and if you are going to try it out or not if you are going to join the waitlist or not and once you get like access how exactly are you going to use it and are you excited about it uh, i'll be happy to know about all of that uh, let's see you in the next one and do let me know if you want me to make a tutorial on something that you uh, that you want to learn i'll be happy to make that as well and i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching